Grandpa in my pocket. The thing about Grandpa is that he's always fun. We play lots of games. Three! Oh, you won again! <laughs> I certainly did. We read Captain Dumble twit stories. Out of the side of the spaceship. <laughs> we share our ice cream. <laughs> we suck up our spaghetti. And Grandpa is always like this. Well, not quite always. Because today, he was like this. Mum, Dad and my sister Jemima were away at a bike fair. And we were being looked after by Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. Which meant we had to eat her weird meals and drink her green gloop. Pardon me to be so rude. It was not me, it was my food. Oh, I see. So you're going to waste my sausage with sardine sauce and marmalade mash, are you? Nope. Beowulf will eat it. I didn't cook it for Beowulf. Smelly, scraggy little mutt. There's nothing but bother, that dog. Beowulf the Bothersome. Little did we know that today, Beowulf the Bothersome was going to turn into... Beowulf the Brilliant! Come on, let's get out of here. If I could get about more easily, I'd go and hide in the bike shop to get away from her. Oh. Mum and Dad run the bike shop in our town. It's called the Sunny Sands Lend It, Mend It and Vend It shop because they lend, mend and sell bikes. Mr Like a Biker was looking after the shop while they were away. Now, Mr Like a Biker is called Mr Like a Biker because he says... Ooh, I like a bike with silver trim. Ooh. I like a bell with a tuneful tinkle. Ooh, I like a helmet with sparkly stars on it. Mr. Like a Biker likes to gear more than he likes cycling. Mm. So there's nothing that he enjoys more than looking after the bike shop. At least I can have some fun with Mr. Like a Biker. You can have some fun with me. Come on, out of that chair. We are going to do some exercises. What? You are so lazy. Oh, wow. oh, look at this dreadful old thing. You never wear it. I'm going to take it to the charity shop. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. You give that to me. <laughs> Thank you, Wolfie. Oh, I've had enough. He could have had my hand off then. That's it. He stays in the kitchen. Any more bother from you, and I'm taking you to the dog's home. The dog's home? Don't you worry, Jason. I've had enough of this. I'll tell you what. I'm going to make her love Wolfie by using this. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. Loretta thinks my car runs on batteries and that I'm the one who sets it off, when actually it's Grandpa's magic that makes it go. The car was empty. I had no idea where Grandpa was or what he was planning. Oh, Grandpa's gone for a bit of a lie down, has he? Anything to get out of doing his exercises. Oh, it's that dog again. He's up to something. I thought it was likely to be Grandpa who was up to something. Grandpa, why did you spill the green gloop? So that Wolfie would lick it up and Loretta would love him. But she was absolutely not going to love Wolfie. Oh, that dog's been on the table after my gloop. Shoo! Grandpa's first plan hadn't worked. Beowulf was in big trouble. <laughs> In fact, 
we were all in big trouble. Ow, me toe, me toe! Oh, fetch the frozen peas, Jason. Great Aunt Loretta is always hurting her toe. And we have a pack of peas in the freezer that we always put on it. Let Wolfie take them into her. Then she'll love him. But Grandpa! Go on! Go, Wolfie, go! The bag had split and there were peas all over the floor. Oh, this is the limit! Grandpa needed another plan, and fast. He ran in from the kitchen and hid behind the sofa, just as Great Aunt Loretta switched on the vacuum cleaner. You're a very bad dog, do you hear? When I've dealt with these peas, I'll deal with you. Now I was really worried. There was no escape for Grandpa. No! Oh, now something's got stuck in it. Yes, something was definitely stuck in it. And that something was Grandpa. Right, the vacuum cleaner is broken and it's all Beowulf's fault. I am taking him to the dog's home. But Great Aunt no Loretta! No buts! I am taking him to the dog's home just as soon as I have been to the... Great Aunt Loretta won't say the word toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. The plan hasn't worked, Grandpa. Oh, we'll think of something. I'm stuck! The door's stuck! Help! Help! It's jammed! Don't panic, Great Aunt Loretta! I am panicking! I'm going to climb out the window. I'll be out in a minute. Up oh, she goes. Out one more. Okay, so the bad news was that Great Aunt Loretta was stuck in the toilet window. The worst news was that Grandpa was stuck in the vacuum cleaner. But I had an idea for getting him out. If your mum and dad own a bike shop, there's always a bicycle pump around. So I pumped away down the tube and suddenly... <gasps> Grandpa was free! But what were we going to do about Great Aunt Loretta? Sure enough, Grandpa had an idea. Wolfie, go and get help. Go and fetch Mr. Like a Biker. So Beowulf ran all the way to the bike shop. <laughs> and he barked and barked at Mr. Like a Biker. <laughs> Until at last, Mr. Like a Biker said, Oh, you want me to come? Oh, right, hang on. So Mr. Like a Biker set off at breakneck speed with Beowulf on the bike. Like a biker's here! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, I do like a damsel in distress. Miss Like a Biker got the window up and rescued Great Aunt Loretta. Oh, oh. oh. oh thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. Well, it's not me you oh. have to thank. It's Beowulf. <laughs> He's the one who came to find me. He's a brilliant dog. Oh, he is. He is. He is Beowulf the Brilliant. Take your cap off. Quick, Grandpa. Grandpa soon whipped off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. Did we do it, Jason? Did we get Great Aunt Loretta to love Wilfie? We did. <laughs> Teamwork, eh? Teamwork! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I am Dr. Cleaner, but sorry about all the mess. <laughs> oh, what's a bit of mess between friends, eh? <laughs> oh, it's such a lovely boy. What's that you've got on your shoulder, Grandpa? Oh, it's only a bit of fluff. Bit of fluff, eh? <laughs> Where have you been? In the vacuum cleaner? Grandpa in my pocket! This is the one. This is the one. Yeah, six. Whoa! One, two, it was the weekend, five, six, and Grandpa and I were playing with our Captain Dumbletwit game. Dad and Jemima were about to go to the hairdressers. And Mum was doing her new hobby. Mum's always taking up new hobbies. One week it's karate, then it's salsa dancing, then cake decorating, the ukulele, Knitting, opera singing, <laughs> and now this photography. Mum had been practicing really hard, and this evening she was going to take a fabulous family photo. Are you coming to the hairdressers too, Jason? No, thanks. He looks fine just as he is. So do we. Don't be wolfy. Come on, Jemima. Time to go. Oh, by the way, Mum's invited somebody else to be in the family photo with us. Is somebody you've known since you were a little boy? Oh, no. It was Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. I didn't know what to wear, so I brought everything. Later. Bye. You better not look like that in the photo. Smile, please, Grandpa. But Grandpa didn't feel like smiling. Like most brothers, he finds his sister very annoying. You're early. Yes, well, I've got plans. For a start, you need smartening up. I'm not going to be seen in a photo with somebody with hairy nostrils. I haven't got hairy nostrils. All grandpas have got hairy nostrils. I'm going to set up my things in the kitchen. I'll call you when I'm ready. Oh, I've had enough of this. I've got to get out of here. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Grandpa, come back! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to put all kinds of magical things. He can fly off in my plane. I'm ready! Grandpa was ready too, to fly out of the house and not come back. But instead, he flew behind the sofa. But just then, Great Aunt Loretta came into the room. Oh, where is he? Gone for a little lie down, has he? Oh, typical. Of course, Great Aunt Loretta has no idea about Grandpa's magic shrinking cap. Never mind. I'll deal with him later. Where's the other scruffy mutt in this family? Beowulf, where are you, you little monster? Great Aunt Loretta isn't very keen on Beowulf. And Beowulf isn't very keen on Great Aunt Loretta. Don't look at me like that. I've got plans for you, too. By the time I've finished with you, even Grandpa won't recognise you. Just then, the doorbell went. And guess who's coming to help me? Somebody who is very good with dogs. Psst, Jason. Hi, Beowulf. Quick. Snip, the dog groomer. Hello, Jason. I'm going to give your doggy a shampoo, a blow dry, and a snip, snip, snip. <laughs> so, where is she? It's a he, and he's called Beowulf. Beowulf? Oh dear, with a name like Beowulf, he sounds very scary and, well, wolf like. Oh, believe me, he's a monster. Now, show me what you brought. 
Miss Snip looked round nervously for Beowulf. Oh, I love these bows. Just look at these sparkly colours. Oh, we've got to get Beowulf in one of these. I knew Grandpa wouldn't want Beowulf to wear a sparkly collar. But first, I want you to give the smelly mutt a bath, Miss Snip. I'd hidden Beowulf behind the bin. I was sure Grandpa was hiding somewhere too. I was crossing fingers that they would both stay out of sight. Do you think Beowulf will mind smelling like rose and rhubarb? Make a change from smelling like Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, go and fetch a doggy towel. Right, come on. Time to go and find the monster. But I don't usually bath scary monster type doggies. Beowulf! I didn't like being out of the room with Beowulf. Grandpa on the loose. I was sure he would have a plan to help Beowulf. And Beowulf. I was right. Rose and rhubarb, revolting. But don't you worry, Wolfie. This is what we... She's coming back. Quick, hide. I rushed back into the kitchen, and Grandpa was looking for somewhere to hide too. He was in such a panic, he knocked over the bottle of shampoo. You can't get away from me. <laughs> Miss Nip, I found him. Come on. As I said, I don't normally bath, monster. Oh, he's not what I expected at all. I thought he'd be big and scary and wolf-like. Oh, silly me. You're not a monster, are you? You're a lovely boy. Oh, you are. You are. Enough of that. Let's get on with the bath. Great Aunt Loretta is always falling over and hurting her toe. Ouch, ouch, ouch. We have a bag of frozen peas in our freezer, ouch, ouch. especially for these moments. Oh, you don't fool me with your big brown eyes. You knocked that bottle over, didn't you? It's your fault. But it wasn't Beowulf's fault. It was Grandpa's. Where was he? I couldn't see him anywhere. We'll have to use washing up liquid instead. Put Beowulf on the table, Miss Snip. The good news was, now I knew Grandpa was hiding in the jug. You can use that jug. The bad news was that Miss Snip was about to fill it with hot water. But just then, Grandpa started growling, pretending to be Beowulf. <coughs> oh, Beowulf, look what you made Miss Snip do. Bad dog, no growling. I'm so sorry. Oh dear, how silly. Luckily, Grandpa had managed to escape. I don't think Beowulf wants a bath. I tell you what, I'd just give him a lovely little trim. Snip, snip, snip. I knew Grandpa wouldn't want Beowulf snip, snip, snipped. I had to do something. No, you missed, you missed him in there. Oh, he owns you there, there. So, while Miss Snip was clearing up the pieces of broken jug, I picked him up and ran off to the sitting room. Jason, put Beowulf next to me, then cover us with some cushions, then you hide too. But what if she finds you? Don't worry, I've got a clever plan. I didn't have time to find out what Grandpa's clever plan was, because at that moment, Miss Snip came into the room, and she had her trimmers in her hand. Beowulf, where is my lovely boy? Time for your snip, snip, snip. Now, don't be silly. I know you're here somewhere. Ah, oh, there you are. Good boy. This was a disaster. Miss Snip was about to find Grandpa too. Now, don't be scared. I'm going to make you all beautiful and tidy. Just a snip snip here and a snip snip there. Oh, no, you don't. You're not snip snip snipping me anywhere. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was pretending that Beowulf could talk. I don't need smelly shampoo or ribbons or a sparkly collar. I'm fine just as I am. Leave me alone or you'll find out why I'm called Beowulf. Oh. Ah! OK, OK. I won't touch you, I promise. And don't tell anyone I can talk. No, no, I won't. I won't. Not a word. I promise. What is all this? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing. I, uh, 
Don't think Beowulf needs snipping after all, or shampooing, or, or anything. I'm not much of a dog groomer, am I? Just terrified of dogs. Grandpa had done it. Sorry, I haven't been much help today. No, you haven't. But you can come and help me choose what to wear for this photo. Bring me back all. As soon as Great Aunt Loretta and Miss Snip were out of sight, I rushed over to Grandpa and Beowulf. Take your cap off! Quick, Grandpa! Grandpa took off his cap and came back to his normal size. We did it, Jason. We saved Beowulf from being groomed. That's what I call teamwork. Yes, Grandpa, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> That evening, everyone came home and Mum got her camera ready to take the family photo. Where's Great Aunt Loretta? Loretta? Grab your minutes! Oh. Hurry up, Great Aunt Loretta! Be quick, we're waiting! What are you doing? Just coming, hold on! And guess what? Miss Snip had groomed Great Aunt Loretta! called Sunny Sands because it's always sunny and it's by the sea. We love spending time at our beach hut on the beach. And you can see the lighthouse from my bedroom window. This is Mum and Dad's bike shop. And here's Miss Smiley's cafe, which serves the best ice cream sundaes in the world. Then there's Mr Whoops's shop, where you can buy anything and everything. Everyone loves Sunny Sands. sunny Saturday morning and Mum had a new hobby, gardening. And you know what Mum's new hobbies are like? They take over the whole house. All I can say is I'm glad she's at the bike shop today, Jason, even if she has left us in a forest. But the forest is great to play with all my beasts, Grandpa. I wouldn't call Gordon a beast. But we can pretend he's one. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, Jason, as it's such a lovely day, why don't we take the beasts into the garden? And that's how it all started. It was going to be really good fun, because today we were going to have... a garden full of beasts. But just then, the doorbell went. I ran to answer it, and who should come storming in? I've come to help. Great Aunt Loretta. And not a moment too soon. Oh, yes. Grandpa's sister was here. Now, Great Aunt Loretta is always making really weird food, like sausage with sardine sauce. And she drinks spinach and sprout shake, which we call green glue. She's always stubbing her toe. We have a pack of peas in the freezer that we always put on it. She's often like this. Or like this. And she makes Grandpa feel like this. There's nothing for it. We'll have to get out there before she makes a terrible mess. What a terrible mess! It's not a terrible mess. It is. It needs sorting. No, it doesn't. We like it like this. You don't know anything about gardens, you lot. But I know a man who does. Great Aunt Loretta had sent for her friend, Mr Hackett, who knew about gardens. Or at least, that's what he thought. Grandpa and I couldn't imagine what he was going to do to our garden. One thing was certain, Mr Hackett was bad news. Oh, Mr Hackett! Grandpa wasn't at all happy. I think I'll just go for a little lie down. Oh. 
just have to play in here, Grandpa, and let them get on with it. We'll do no such thing, Jason. Mr Hackett will hack the garden to pieces if we don't stop him. Don't you worry. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to play all kinds of magical things. Grandpa! Get down, Grandpa! Fly off in my plane. He can get into my car and make it go. Or he could just run for all he's worth. <gasps> Grandpa! Get down, Grandpa! Grandpa shrinks and disappears, everyone thinks he's having a little lie down. Apart from me. But right now, I had no idea where he was. Until... we He was flying about on Gordon, my toy seagull. Grandpa, come back down! I didn't know what Grandpa's plan was, but mine was to get into the garden to see what Mr Hackett was up to. <sighs> Great Aunt Loretta was showing him the tree. I mean, just look at it. It's so overgrown. Oh, hack it. Hack it by name, hack it by nature. That's me. Then she showed him the flower bed. Look at it. It's full of weeds. No worries. I'll dig it. I can dig as well as I can hack. And then she showed him the pond. Just look at the state of the pond. It's so full of weed. I feel really sorry for Keith. Keith is the gnome that Great Aunt Loretta gave Grandpa one birthday. He can't catch any fish in that murky water, can you, Keithy? Mm. Great Aunt Loretta is very keen on Keith. I'll weed it. No worries. Great Aunt Loretta left Mr Hackett to get on, but I knew she'd be back later. Her start with a tree. No, you mustn't have the tree. I'll just get me stepladder. But there's a bird's nest in the tree. I looked around for Grandpa. I knew he'd be planning to come into the garden soon. And I was right. Grandpa! Wee! Wee! Get Wee! down! Wee! Wee! Luckily, Grandpa was well hidden by the time Mr Hackett came back. Right, time for a quick hack. I wouldn't go up there, Mr Hackett. Don't you worry about me. Why don't you go and check on your grandpa inside, eh? But of course, my grandpa wasn't inside. He was... Ah! Ah! He was in the nest. Ah! That's no ordinary seagull. No, it's, um... It's a cross between a seagull and a pterodactyl. I had to it's think called... up a name really fast. It's called... It's called a Gordonosaurus. Very rare. Ah! ah! I think maybe I won't hack the tree. I'll do the flower bed. I'll just go and get my spade from the van. So far, so good, Jason. Go and get the box of beasts ready for my next plan. Grandpa's next plan was this. Got me spade. Now it's time to diggity dig. <laughs> ah, it's a new Terry spider. Oh yes, there are tons of those huge Terry spiders in that flower bed. I think perhaps I'll start on the pond. I'll just pop inside for a drink of water first. Oh, this is going awfully well, Jason. All we've got to do is stop him messing with the pond. Once Grandpa's got an idea, there's no stopping him. But Mr Hackett came out of the kitchen before Grandpa had a chance to hide. Luckily, Grandpa had an idea. That's odd. There are two Keiths. I'm sure there was only one Keith before. Just then, the doorbell went. I'll go. 
When I looked back at the pond, Keith number two had gone. I wondered what he was up to. And then I found his clothes. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. The bad news was, Grandpa was planning a swim. The worst news was, that guess who was back? Nothing's been done! Come on! I'll help! Well, the thing is, you see, unfortunately, you see, this garden is full of beasts. And, and, another Keith has appeared. Another Keith? Don't be so silly. Where's the other Keith? Er, he was there. It's gone missing. And at that moment, I realised that something else had gone missing. My alligator. Then I saw Grandpa's cap and I guessed what was coming. Grandpa was hiding in the pond, waggling the alligator. I told you this garden was full of beasts! Grandpa was back in his clothes. He whipped off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. Oh. Well done, Grandpa. I don't think Mr Hackett will be back. I couldn't have done it without you, Jason. You and the beasts, of course. Teamwork, eh? Teamwork. <laughs> Just then, Great Aunt Loretta came down the stairs, so I quickly hid my alligator. I feel better for having had a little lie down, that's for sure. Oh, you... You've got a bit of pondweed stuck behind your ear, Grandpa. Anyone would think you'd been swimming in the pond with that alligator. Don't be ridiculous. I'll have you know, it's a very bad idea to keep alligators in ponds, Jason Mason. <laughs> All behind cushions. <laughs> taking me and Grandpa to the beach for the day. But just as we were about to leave, the doorbell rang. Thank goodness you're here. It was Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's oh. sister. Oh, I feel so sick. Oh, dear. Oh, my tummy. Ow! Ow! Great Aunt Loretta cooks very odd food. She's always drinking spinach and sprout shake. Grandpa calls it green gloop. I reckon you've had too much green gloop. Green gloop, I'll have you know, does not give you tummy ache. It gives you muscles. Oh, oh Loretta. Oh, you're not well. Don't worry. We'll look after you. Grandpa was disappointed. We weren't going to the beach after all. Instead, we were going to spend the day getting on Loretta better. And tonight, I was going to a concert to see my favourite singer in the whole wide world. Look, here's my ticket. Rick, the rocking raver. I've always loved his singing. It's music to my ears. You're the sugar, sugar, the sugar in my tea. Ooh, what I've got is CD too. Ooh, look. Ooh. And now because I'm so poorly, I won't be able to go. Oh dear. I'll get something to settle your tummy, Loretta. Ooh, ooh, I've got to go to the toilet. Great Aunt Loretta won't say the word toilet out loud because she thinks it's rude. There's only one thing for it, Jason. If we want to go to the beach and she wants to go and see Rick the Rocking Raver, then we've got to take her mind off her tummy ache. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to put all kinds of magical things. Get down! 
for all he's worth. <gasps> Grandpa! Get down, Grandpa! <laughs> I'm the only one who knows that Grandpa shrinks. When he's missing, everyone else thinks he's gone for a little lie down. Just then, Great Aunt Loretta came back. Grandpa, hide! And Grandpa hid in Great Aunt Loretta's handbag. Oh, Grandpa's gone for a little lie down, has he? He's no help, is he? Oh, here we are, Loretta. Oh. Now drink this up; it'll help your tummy ache. Oh. I'll go and see if I can find some soup for lunch. Oh. I thought I should get Great Aunt Loretta to drink her medicine, but no, take it away. I won't touch it. Oh. Take my shoes off, Jason, please. This was the last ah. thing anyone would want to do. Oh. Grandpa found it very funny. Oh, and the socks too. It was all very well for Grandpa. Ah. Now it was my turn to laugh. <laughs> don't you laugh. I don't see what's so funny, Jason Mason. Ow. You'll feel better if you drink this. Promise. Oh. Drink me. Did that medicine just speak, Jason Mason? No, of course not. Drink me quick, you won't be sick. Then you can go and sing with Rick. Oh, I'm hearing voices. Oh, I'm not at all well. I'm imagining that medicine speaking to me. Julie, help! Ow! Oh, ow! Oh, ow! Oh, it's out! Ow! Oh, ow! Oh, ow! Oh, oh. Well, that didn't work. We need a different plan, Jason. I think we should try soothing her. Can you get the peas, please, Jason? Ah. Great Aunt Loretta is always tripping over things and hurting her toe. We have a bag of frozen peas in the freezer, especially for these moments. You'll feel better in the fresh air. I'll get back to the soup. I had no idea what Grandpa's soothing plan would be. He couldn't get into the garden through the kitchen because Mum was in there. But of course, Grandpa found another way. Grandpa flew right out my bedroom window and landed in the tree. Oh. I wondered how Grandpa oh. planned to soothe Great Aunt Loretta. I soon found out. Tweet, 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 he was being tweet, a tweeting tweet, bird. Tweet, 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 that's all I need, a tweeting bird. Hush, you. I'm after some peace and quiet. Your plane's up in the tree, Jason. Oh, I suppose that tweeting bird flew it up there. Little did she know that she was absolutely right. But the tweeting bird was about to go too far. You are giving me a headache. Please! You come out of there and stop tweeting! As Great Aunt Loretta tried to get Grandpa out of the back of the box, I pulled him out of the hole at the front. Run! There's no tweeting bird in there! Oh, I'm so poorly! First I think the medicine's speaking to me and then I imagine there's a tweeting bird in the box! Julie, help! Oh, Jason, we're not doing very well, are we? No, Grandpa. We need another plan. I know. I'll pretend to be Rick the Rocking Raver. How? You take me in and put me behind the radio, then stand by with Rick the Rocking Raver's CD. Oh! Oh! So I put Grandpa behind the radio, and now we had to try out our next plan. I so wanted to go to Rick's concert. I know. Why don't I turn the radio on? That'll cheer you up. So I pretended to turn the radio on, and now it was Grandpa's turn to pretend. And my special guest today 
is the very one, the very only, Rick the Rockin' Raver. Well, hi. I'm Rick, and I'm rockin', and I'm ravin'. It's him! It's Rick! So it is! Well, that should cheer you up, Loretta. Oh, well, I'll go and do the soup. Now, is there a great Aunt Loretta out there listening? Because if there is, I got a message for you. There is, there is! It's me! My message is that I hope you're feeling tons better and that you'll make my concert tonight, Honey Pie. Oh, oh I am, I am. Oh, I'm feeling much better. Oh, he called me Honey Pie. And here's a little song just for you. And that was the moment to put the CD on without her seeing me. You're the sugar. Sugar. The sugar in my tea You're the icing Icing The icing on my cake You're the sunlight, sunlight. The shimmers on the sea You're the strawberry The strawberry in my shake Shake, shake, give me shake Whenever we're together Whatever the weather Every day is a fun day You're the cherry on top of my ice cream sundae You, yes you Oh, he's singing it for me! Oh, oh, oh. oh, Jason Mason, you must have found the radio station and told them I was poorly Oh, you're such a lovely boy! Oh, 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 oh. oh I've got to get to that concert Come on, give me me socks Oh! You're the honey, the honey, the honey on my toes. Oh, my You're the apple, apple, the apple in my pie. You're the gravy, gravy. the gravy on my roast. You're the stars that twinkle in the sky. Goodness, that's over. Our plan had worked. Grandpa jumped off the shelf, took his shrinking cap off, and was soon Ooh. back to his normal size. Oh, we did it, Jason. We took our mind off her tummy ache. Yes, Grandpa. Teamwork, eh? Teamwork. <laughs> Here's your soup, Loretta. Oh, where's she gone? We got her better. So Great Aunt Loretta went to her concert, and we went to the beach. Hi, I'm Rick. And I'm rockin' and I'm ravin'. Goodness, Grandpa, that's exactly what he said on the radio. It could have been you. 